Thanks for waking up with us. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to Stand Focus for Jesus. Hope each and every one of you are having a blessed day. In the Lord Jesus Christ, as always, today is Tuesday, March 22nd. 2022 Tuesday March 22nd 2022 um y'all know most of you know I do not subscribe to what is taught in regards to what we call so-called white people I do not believe that there is what we call a white race according to the Bible. I don't believe it. History doesn't support it. The Bible doesn't support it. DNA doesn't support it. It's something that's made up and not made up in a in a good way. We have white as a descriptive term and black as a descriptive term in comparison to white. Now, yes, we know today we have what we call the white race, the black race, and and stuff like that. We know that. The question we need to ask ourselves is, where did we get the term white race? Where, where did it come from? Once we understand that and what's really going on, then we can start to understand the roots of white supremacy. And these different things. And even understand what we consider and what people call black su black superiority or black supremacy. Now, I shared a video from this guy. Solid research. Most of his research is solid. He brings some solid stuff. Um, My issue is his take on the Bible and some other things. He claims to be doing this to educate people. My channel is also to educate people. If you remember, this is I used one of his videos and then he flagged it. He flagged it. I'm like, I thought it was fair use. I thought it was fair use. And the reason is because of his views of the Bible. He didn't like what I said in regards to what what he says about the Bible. I'm going to use this clip again because he has some solid information. If he flags it, then he flags it. Not as complexion. All right, so we're in this uh, next book. And I just want to show you that this is more than just, you know, people writing little articles here and there. This is actual history that they left out of our educational system. We're talking about indentured servitude. And we're talking about white servants white slavery all right so this is the john hopkins university studies and historical and political science by herbert b adams the editor it says history is past politics and politics are present history freeman hmm. 13 series all right and it's called white servitude in virginia yes white servitude in virginia a study of the system of indentured labor in the american colonies by james curtis bala all right white servitude in the colony of virginia the colonists were marched to their daily work in squads and companies under officers these are white people colonists europeans not, not talking about african slaves here all right and the severest penalties were prescribed for a breach of discipline or neglect of duty a persistent neglect of labor was to be punished by galley service from one to three years. Penal servitude was also instituted for petty offenses. They worked as slaves in irons for a term of years in irons and chains. All right, we're talking about white people, not Africans, not black people. We're talking about white Europeans being put in uh, irons for a term of years. The planters affirmed that there were continual whippings 
and extraordinary punishments such as hangings hang who's getting hanged first you see who's getting whipped hang all right shooting breaking on the wheel and even burning alive they were burning these people alive but it is likely they must exaggerate the state of affairs so they were sending so many people here even before 1619 since 1607 they were trying to set this up right now we're in the black's law dictionary it says here definitions of the terms and phrases of american and english jurisprudence ancient and modern by henry campbell black ma author of treatises on judgments tax titles intoxicating liquors bankruptcy mortgages constitutional law interpretation of laws rescission and cancellation of contracts etc this is the revised fourth edition okay in 1968 is when they made this and i'm on page 792 we got a definition here for free white persons and i want you guys to pay close attention to what it's going to tell you this is who they were talking about when they were talking about white free white persons referred to a naturalization act as amended by act of july 14 1870 has meaning naturally given and it went first used in one statute 103 c3 meaning all persons belonging to the european races then commonly counted as white any european and their descendants including such descendants in other countries to which they have emigrated now pay attention to the fine print right here it says it includes all european jews all of them not just ash cannot see jews all of them okay sephardic jews as well colored jews more or less intermixed with peoples of celtic scandinavian teutonic iberian latin greek and slavic descent it includes magyars laps Finns, and the basque and albanians it includes the mixed latin celtic iberian and moorish inhabitants of spain and portugal again what does white include european jews all of them all european jews and moorish inhabitants of spain and portugal those are white free white that's what you see free white moorish inhabitants of spain and portugal now we know already celtic slavic a lot of these basque the basque got a future video very dark skin complexion people a lot of the language resembles the algonquin the basque we know a lot of these the fins there was the white pair bear fins and the dark skin fins so we know a lot of these iberians we know a lot of these are swarthy people as well who are being called white along with the moorish inhabitants of spain and portugal we already know so-called negro people again being called free whites okay the mixed greek latin phoenician and north african inhabitants of sicily and the mixed slav and tartar inhabitants of south russia it does not mean caucasian remember i mentioned the slavs i did a whole sermon on this y'all remember that no why would they be saying that why would they be saying that then he goes on and said it does not mean caucasian race Aryan race or indo-european races nor the mixed indo-european dravidian semitic or mongolian peoples who inhabited persia we know how this is applied today caucasian race we know how it's applied i said it because a lot of people get confused when it comes or oh, the caucasian race because they came from the caucasus mountains and all this other stuff History is bigger than that. <laughs> but when they're more so referring to the Caucasian race, we know what they're talking about. Just like the Ar excuse me, the Aryan race. Race, it does not mean Caucasian race, Aryan race, or Indo-European races, nor the mixed Indo-European Dravidian 
Semitic Mongolian people who inhabit Persia. It does not mean Caucasian race. A Syrian of Asiatic birth and descent will not be entitled to become a naturalized citizen of the United States as being a free white person. So these are the different court cases. Again, it says nor a native born Filipino, nor a native India, a native of India who belonged to the Hindu race. Okay, all the court cases. Now we got another term here. I wanted to show you guys what it says. It says here, free woman of color. Are you ready? What's a free woman of color? In the Black's Law Dictionary. It says a term up to the time of the Civil War applied to all persons not of the white race. A free woman of, per of color is a person that's not from these people, right? That would include Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal and European Jews, right? What does it include? It includes Indians, though, including Indians, free women of color, right? Apply to all persons who are not considered the white race, right? The white race, free white right here, the white race. Including Indians, including Indians, free women of color, including Indians, free women of color, including Indians. Wake up and stop with your prejudices and your tags and generalizations is deeper than that. All right, free white persons, according to Black's Laws Dictionary. Indeed, not a single English or American sailor or traveler captured at sea by North African pirates between 1600 and 1775 described himself or herself as a white slave or even as white uh, in over uh, three dozen published memoirs. Instead, they described themselves as Christian captives, as Christian slaves, and frequently as English slaves. To be a white slave was to be a Muslim, and if born in Europe, to be someone who had converted to Islam a so-called renegade. Mm. To be a white slave was to be a Muslim, and if born in Europe, to be... Think about that. Why is it when you go back in history and you read these accounts of these people describing themselves and describing the people around them, they're not saying what we are saying today. And you just saw from the Black's Law Dictionary how America defined free white persons. <laughs> it wouldn't be how we define white today, right? Someone who had converted to Islam. To be a white slave or a white servant in North America in the 1680s was likewise to be understood as a trafficked subject. To be a white slave or a white servant in North America in the 1680s was likewise to be understood as a trafficked subject. A He's telling us, according to history, if they were considered in that aspect, tra they were trafficked. Migrant whose whiteness marked his or her fungibility, their capacity to be bought and sold, wow. rather than their rights as a political subject. You hear that? A white racial grammar emerged conspicuously in the, net, in the 1680s in reference to one group, indentured servants. They're the only people described as white. Who? Uh, especially that? those, and especially those transported to the New World as felons. And what I found in the course of my research is there was a persistent demonization of poor white people. In other words, in many eras in, in white society, if you were poor, it was tantamount to being a criminal. And that criminalization was then uh, a connotation for making you a slave. And this slavery, by the way, this villainage, even was hereditary. In the chronicles that I read, in the accounts that I read, there was a almost biological taint on children of parents who had been white slaves or villains. Now remember, what what how they define white back then is not how we define it today. When they're saying white, you gotta be careful. Cause if he's saying white, is he really defining according to historical records and what we see here? With the law, 
the law of America, the law of America, not how we define it today as the so-called white race. This is crazy. It's crazy, but, it, but it's, it's, it's interesting. This is something that the Lord put in my spirit for years. Y'all know I've been saying stuff like this. That there really is no such thing as what we call the so-called white race. Technically, white people are, quote-unquote, they're black. Now, again, today how we describe them as white is the proper understanding, again, is them being described as white in comparison to a darker person. You even have what we call white people, the white race, that are darker than black people. Black isn't restricted to skin color. There's so many things that go into a person being, quote unquote, we call black. Skull structure, uh, uh, um, nose and lips all these different things there's other things that go into being black we, what we call black the black race not just skin color because again i can show you and i've showed you before there are white people that are darker naturally darker have more melanin in their skin than black people And yet that person that's lighter, that black person that's lighter is still considered black. But the other person that's what we would call white, even though they're darker than that black person, they're still considered white. Don't be confused. Just break it down point by point by point. Divide it. Rightly divide it. Rightly divide the truth. So to summarize, I would say that the enslavement of whites, far from being a very brief period in the annals of time, was in fact the universal experience of whites. So now we come to the modern period, and we have this absurd stereotype which denotes black skin with servitude. And it's absurd. It's a folly. So I'm bringing the good news to black people that they are not of any more of a slave race than whites have been, they'll say, well... Now, this is the issue that I have with the person that made this video. And a lot of uh, people that lay hold to more so the Native American Indian lineage here in America. They downplay the Bible and they downplay what God said. God said that our people will go into captivity. It is what it is. It, it is what it is. That did happen. As I can't speak for everybody else, but as far as I know in the research that I've done, what the Lord has shown me, I'm not a native of the Americas. I know where my people came from. Now we can get to the argument about, oh, are we all from Africa? Technically, we all from Africa. It is what it is. From the Fertile Crescent, the people expanded throughout throughout the world. Our people were more specifically in Africa, Arabia, these different areas. Then my lineage specifically traveled up there through what's known as Ireland, Scotland, these different places. There's a lot of rich history with that. It's also a lot of rich history with that in the Bible. And from there, came down into the Americas when King James and his lineage and everything was ruling and it started to decline, 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 decline until they got up out of there because they had no choice. Coming into the Americas. Remember what Benjamin Franklin said going way back then, that majority of the people in this time period, they were black. The same people that are being mentioned right here, Benjamin Franklin said they were black. And that the number of solely what they considered white people was 
very small. It was very small. We can't compare white bondage to black slavery because the whites didn't do very difficult work and the enslavement was all over with within seven years. No way. There were many loopholes and abuses of that law. As you and I know, there can be a law on a piece of paper. That doesn't mean that that's what's lived or brought into So let's see what it says in here. It says, The Invention of the White Race, Volume 1, Racial Oppression and Social Control. Again, very important. Social control. What's going on right now? I have this book in my, um, in my cart. I haven't looked at it yet. I haven't bought it yet. But it's in my cart. Lockdown, right? Social control, racial oppression, and social control by Theodore W. Allen. Introduction by Jeffrey B. Perry. A powerful and polemical study. Times Literary Supplement. All right. So the first edition of the invention of the white race were startled by Allen's bold assertion on the back cover. When the first Africans arrived in Virginia in 1619, there were no white people there again again when the first so-called africans right we're going to dodge the hijack we already know these uh so-called 20 odd negroes were taken from a ship a spanish ship named the Juan bautista which the portuguese had given to the spanish right it's, it was you know it was supposed to be coming uh from africa supposedly right that's why they had you have two different you have two different 13 colonies you got the modern day 13 colonies that they have taken and pretty much hijacked to apply to themselves even though when you go look at the historical records of how they people describe themselves is not what's being pictured today then you had the original original 13 colonies which was black people coming over from uh europe britain britain all these different places because they were rebelling against the monarchy system of government. That is the government of the Bible. Why? Because it's through bloodline. That's what they were rebelling against. They knew who we were as a people. This is why when you really look into history, you find out that a lot of black people had slaves. I'm talking about in the early ages going way back to the to the uh, establishing of America. You look at these records like, dang, wh where do these black folk people come from and how they have all these slaves? you like, oh man, this, this is bull job. No, it's not bull job. You're not understanding that the black people were coming over here first, coming from um, um, uh, uh, Europe, Scotland, Ireland, Great Britain, these different places. They were coming from there. Rebelling against them. Now, some of these laws start to make more and more sense. It was never really meant for us. It was meant for them. Rather, they were black, modern day black, ancient black, modern day white, ancient white. It wasn't meant for us. Israelites from that lineage that Christ came from because our lineage is a lineage of kings and queens a government of monarchy not democracy supposed to black people but actually when I checked the voyage of this ship it never stopped in Africa according to the recorded voyage all right unless it left europe and arrived at, at the west indian islands all right the caribbean and from there it was pirated by english who took 20 of those people all right and brought them to um so they weren't coming from africa there's no proof of that so we're gonna and, and that's right there this is why i have an issue there's no there's no proof that these ships came or went to africa there is proof because this document here isn't specifically saying it doesn't mean there aren't other documents
there's mounds and mounds of evidence of slave ships going back and forth to Africa. This is this is my issue I have with this guy right here. Because if you're saying that's not the case, then you're saying that the Bible lied. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to touch the hijack right there. But it's telling us that before any people of color, is why they mean any people of color arrived in Virginia in 1619, there were no white people there. No white people, huh? Nor according to the colonial records would there be for another 60 years, all right? So they're letting you know that officially recorded, there is no mention of a so-called white person, the word white, for 60 years. That statement based on 20 plus years of research and Virginia's colonial records, all right? You understand that? Did you do the research? No white people mentioned, all right? No, the word white didn't exist there for 60 years years ever anywhere recorded in the beginning of Virginia's colony reflected the fact that Allen found no instance of the official use of the word white as a token of social status it didn't mean anything it wasn't a token of social status do you hear that prior to its appearance in Virginia law passed in 1691 as he later explained others living in the colony at that time were English all right, now pay attention, they were what? English. They had been English when they left England, and naturally, they and their Virginia-born children were English, right? They were not white, listen to what they're saying. White identity had to be carefully taught, and it would be only after the passage of some six crucial decades, 60 years, right, that the word would appear as a synonym for European <clears throat> Americans for European Americans so are these Europeans only pale skin no we already know that a lot of these Europeans were so-called Negro too so they would be considered white as well if they're if they're European Americans you understand what they're saying here that word white didn't exist it wasn't about race they were all English you were an Englishman you were a black Englishman or a white Englishman, you were it doesn't matter, you were English. The word white didn't exist. So we continue says it is in the context of such findings that he offers his major thesis, the white race was invented as a ruling class. It was invented as a ruling class. This was invented as a ruling class social control, formation and responses to labor, solidarity as manifested in the later Civil War stages of Bacon's Rebellion in 1676-1677. To this, he adds two important corollaries. The ruling elite in its own class interest deliberately instituted a system of racial privileges to define and maintain the white race. Again, the ruling elite. Who became the ruling elite? They were had an agenda. All right. The ruling elite in its own class interest deliberately instituted a system of racial privileges to define and maintain the white race. It wasn't about complexion until they created this. Now, why is this not being known more widely in America? Why is this being swept under the rug? We have a gigantic industry in the United States and in the West, which is determined to limit black people to a slave mentality, to tell them you've been slaves and the only way you're ever going to get out of that is to rely on the slave mentality of the socialistic welfare democratic system, which is going to subsidize your manumission ever further. Well, as we know, no one ever gets out of his own bondage by someone else doing it for you. It's by your own work that you bring yourself out of bondage. That's why you gotta be careful with this stuff. <laughs> That's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what God teaches. God said that we would not be able to redeem ourselves. We would not be able to, you know, pay money. Because it's about the redemption of the soul and the spirit. This is why we cover these sermons prior to this one. About riches and these different things, the atonement money and stuff like that. When it all comes together, then it makes more and more sense. This is why you got to be careful. 
Because a person will listen to that and say, yeah, I do it by myself. You can do it by yourself. Even in Christ, you can do it by yourself. But he still gets the glory. How can you do it by yourself? Because he gives us the power. He gives us the power. He gave me the power to be able to make this video. He's expecting me to make it because I'm of that age. But in regards to salvation, I, I can save myself. If I could save myself, then Christ wouldn't have to come do what he did. You got to be careful, y'all. There's many things you can learn from this. You can learn how the enemy operates, whether it's a so-called white person or the person that made this video. Do put forth some solid stuff. But I really, I know what's going on. That's why he flagged the last video I did using what he said. But it's supposed to be fair use. My videos aren't monetized. I'm using fair use also. How's that any different from what I know he does is complains about other people flagging his video? Or him using different clips and stuff and then getting shut down even though his is fair use? Because certainly white... I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Let me see. Yes. Pretty much the same thing unless he's talking. But, um, yeah, if you need to go back and watch the video again to break it down, I know some of it may seem confusing, but God is not the author of confusion. The Spirit is going to give you clarity. They end up taking it and say, okay, we're going to apply it to this and exalt these people to a higher social status and have them look upon people that look like this as the bottom of the bottom. And the even inter more interesting thing about that is that's according to the word of God. God even said that was going to happen. God is the one that gives people over to confusion. This is why when I study this stuff, it can seem confusing, but I can understand it easily because the Spirit is leading me. The Spirit is guiding me and leading me in some truth. No, that's not what the word says. It says in all truth. It says in all truth. But with that being said, God bless each and every one of you in Jesus Christ's name. As always, stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, the truth is not debated. It is declared. <laughs> Thanks for waking up with us.
foul.